Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the concept of uh, noise and long -term, holding long-term assets. Um, my parents' generation grew up during the Depression, and the effects of the Depression influenced their whole lives. It affected how they spent money, how they saved money, how they saved material things, reused material things. And our generation had a big event in 2008, 2009, which was a hair-raising event, and we really in my opinion, we're lucky to get out as lightly as we did. However, that memory uh, remains with uh, people who had investments at the time and watched them decline in value precipitously uh, over a short, relatively short period of time. And so today, uh, people are very still very sensitized uh, to headlines and news events that might portend a repeat of that event. I know that my parents and their generation were affected over decades by the, the Great Depression. And so I think there's some memory from the 2008-2009 reverberating uh, through the memories of people today. And so we see news items like the coronavirus uh, or what's going on in Europe, populism, so on and so forth, and we have a a magnifying mechanism today that wasn't present at the time of the Depression, and that is uh, media. Uh, the written media, the spoken media, the viewed media, and now social media are ubiquitous uh, all over, and it's they're actually uh, magnifying news items behind the scenes, uh, governments, uh, research institutions, investment interests, trying to influence our opinions and how we act. And so when you put those two together, um, the news media uh, makes money by trying to make us pay attention, uh, motivated by fear or greed or other extreme emotions. And so we have to deal with that uh, with respect to our investments. And I get almost every day a request to opine on a news item, an article, a rant, uh, uh, very, and they're all pretty much negative in nature. There's almost nothing that comes into my email that's positive. What about taking advantage of this opportunity or that? And I think this is largely an echo of the um, uh, great, uh, the GFC, uh, the Great Financial Crisis. And so um, I think it's important to realize that over the span of time, if you go back to 2010, and think of all the negative things that have happened come out of the news um, and look at where we are today, almost none of them came to fruition uh, with respect to negative effects on long-term investments. It's certainly true that some uh, types of long-term investments have fared better than others over that time, but none of them have been destroyed. Uh, all of them are up since the crisis. And so the idea of a long-term investment is that it's money that's not meant to be spent in the next year, or even five or 10 years, that's held for the long term for consumption way out in the future by us or by our kids or grandkids. And we should be paying attention to the long term fundamentals. And so the question to ask on a news item like the coronavirus is what, as Warren Buffett would say, what impact does today's headline have on corporate or business, American business in the next 10 or 20 years. And the coronavirus, the answer is almost certainly very little. Um, and it's the same with a lot of other news items. Many of these negative news items don't even come to fruition. But what, what's really important in the long run is, is the underlying return generating engine business uh, here and abroad that produces earnings and dividends that we need to live off in the future. Is it intact um, or uh, are we going to be able to live off dividends and earnings? And are we paying, the other factors, are we paying too much right now? And that's, that's certainly another question for another day. Um, however, uh, the idea of keeping our eye on the ball and looking at the long-term growth of earnings, which in the U.S. has typically been um, right around 5% um, before inflation, and uh, closer to 2% after inflation, dividends, those are the things that we really want to 
keep our eye on and determine how much we're paying for them. And so on that basis, especially relative to the rest of the opportunity set, investing in cash, investing in bonds, which are at historic low yields all over the world right now, um, the long-term uh, earning capacity of American and foreign businesses looks really good and survives through all these terrible short-term headlines. So I would urge people to take a breath, not get faked out of their game, or deked as we would say in hockey, and uh, um, consider what the long-term perspectives are because it's expensive to trade in and out of markets. And for those of us, most of our clients pay taxes. We have to either realize taxes we wouldn't be paying or accelerate the payment of capital gains taxes. So trading on a motion based on recent events can be counterproductive uh, from a number of considerations. And lastly, even if I had skill in doing that, um, and I don't portend that I do, uh, but if you, I would challenge you to go on Amazon or to an old-fashioned bookstore and look on the bookshelves. There are investment books that have survived for decades, um, and, and you won't find any of them that talk about successful investors who have tried to time markets in and out of news events or macro events or anything. It's always about people who are buying and holding long value for the long term. Those books, uh, Random Walk Down Wall Street, uh, Loser's Game, um, Jesse Livermore's book, they're all uh, about investing in the long run. And so uh, even if I had skill, if I was 70% accurate in my ass assessments on the future, to go into a news event or to respond to a news event I have to make a number of different um, decisions correctly. I have to take the news event and tie or estimate the, the reaction of different types of investments to that event and be accurate. I have to make the judgment on when to get out of a market and be accurate. And then I have to make the judgment on when to get back in. So if we just take two out of those three, if I have a 70% accuracy rate uh, just to get in and out, uh, if I multiply two probabilities together to get the probability of getting it all right, 0.7 times 0.7 is 0 0.49, it's less than 50-50 or a coin flip. And that's why it's so hard to do, and that's why you don't see long-term investors like Warren Buffett or any, uh, you know, the, the successful investors are like Warren Buffett. There aren't many that, uh, if any, that have successfully built their careers on timing markets. So the um, realizing to some extent we're being played, uh, which is sounds somewhat cynical, but the media wants our attention, wants us to watch and uh, uh, react and act on what they do, but realize what their motives are and your, your motives are different. Thank you.